All right, let's talk about the top 20 things you need to know about Type 1 appliances. And the first one is, is that they deal with five pounds or less, and I'm gonna write less here, of refrigerant that's been charged at the factory. It's uh, pre-charged and sealed. And the sealing means that there are, there's no taps or ports for us to hook up gauges to. So there's gonna need to be some sort of, uh, I don't know, line tap or piercing valve installed on it that we'll talk about in a minute but these are not mvac systems motor vehicle air conditioning systems is a different section and there's also no drop-in replacement for any of the refrigerants and type 1 appliances or really any appliance because sometimes the oil will need to be swapped out and that's a retrofit so any of those things are not going to be happening. Either we're going to not probably be talking about MBAC equipment, motor vehicle air conditioning, or refrigerants that could be dropped in because of the oil changes. So we're going to come back up here and talk some more about the system dependent recovery process uh, because really it's for on the type of appliances we're talking about more, no more than 15 pounds if you're doing system dependent. And it can be done in a non pressurized container in a bag. Well, we can also use a tank that's been evacuated. One of our recovery tanks that we talked about up here. All right, that's been evacuated. It can act as a system dependent recovery device. And uh, also, I mean, I might have to talk about the fittings that we have to install the piercing valves. Sometimes install high and low access sides if the compressor is not working. So that's something that we're gonna talk about. Other things you can do to help speed that recovery process with system dependent is add a little heat with a heat gun. Maybe uh, you can uh, tap the compressor with a rubber mallet gently, never use a torch. Um, or you can kick on the defrost if it's a refrigerator. And those things there will help speed up the recovery process and help remove any trapped refrigerant. So. Uh, the self-contained, the biggest thing about self-contained equipment that we talked about up here, the active, which is another unit, if it does have oil, then it has to be checked for leaks. And usually we have a dryer that we install prior to the inlet of the recovery device that we swap out for different refrigerants as well as change out once we do a couple recoveries. And uh, that's just doing a little recycling, also filtering it out there. So couple things we're gonna bring back down the AHRI 740 right here and I want to talk about that for a minute because things they need to know about that is really it's an 80 90 rule now where either the compressor doesn't run and you got to suck 80% of the refrigerant out the HRI 740 or the compressor does run it checks out and you can get 90% of the refrigerant as long as we're getting down to a four inch and mercury vacuum that's uh that's really all they're looking for there so need to use according to the ahr 700 when we're putting all this recovery equipment together um low loss or self-sealing fittings on our hoses all right so that's kind of a, a little rule there uh, that you need to know about so i'm gonna move this up a little bit and then um I'm going to go ahead and also talk about the tank real quick. So I'm going to draw my tank that we had up there that was regulated by the DOT. Because another thing is, is on the tank, uh, normally they use a scale now. And the scale makes sure that we're going to weigh in no more than 80% of the charge. Uh, because there used to be, back in the day, a float ball valve that would rise up. All right, and the float would shut off a switch or have some sort of mechanism to make sure we're not adding any more refrigerant with a recovery machine. So again, you can have a vacuum pump suck out all the non-condensables air when you first get the tank or an empty tank, and you can use that as a system dependent recovery device. So other things to keep in mind, especially when we're talking about a, a old school stuff like a, cause before the scales, there was a dial of charge that looks like a cylinder. It's a charging cylinder that we used to add the refrigerant, a tank of refrigerant, a virgin tank, usually in liquid form, upside down through the bottom. 
and then any remaining refrigerant um, when we had to get more liquid in vapor would be vented off the top and we used to be able to just pop that right out of the top and not have to recover it but now they're saying that we have to you know we have to hook it up to the tank and get that refrigerant reclaimed or recovered back into the tank and uh, we cannot just vent it out off the top of the dial of charge cylinders anymore so a couple other things to keep in mind that uh, you want to make sure that we're if we have any R600 man that's flammable that's gonna cause some sort of uh, it's a hydrocarbon refrigerant so it's a it's a high a3 refrigerant that's highly flammable and um, we can't retrofit with those so there's no retrofitting into that refrigerant uh, but they are being used along with 290 and 450 a out in the field uh, so uh, the leak uh, for that is that uh, uh, the leak repair on that is going to be a little different than what we do for our regular stuff and the same with the the r744 which is our co2 refrigerant which is our very high pressure refrigerant uh, that just gets vented out to the air all right and um, if you had a mixture or another refrigerant we don't want to mix it like 410a or this one here is r134a up here that we're going to use for this tank they never can be mixed we're not going to ever mix any refrigerants each tank's going to have its own specific refrigerant in it so and you can just vent that refrigerant out into the atmosphere because it's just carbon dioxide a um, couple other things about the piercing valves so piercing valves all right they also call them tap lines all right but they've got to be leak tested they also call them line taps and they cannot be left in the system uh, after repair is done. You got to remove them and braze in some access valves. But the first thing you do after installing these piercing valves is a uh, leak test with bubbles. All right. And um, if you do hook up a piercing valve, one of these piercing valves, and your gauge says zero, all right, then uh, that means there's nothing in there and nothing means you're not going to recover because there's nothing to get out so when it says zero that's very easy now if you pop it open and you smell a strong uh, burnout like there's an odor that means some sort of flash has gone on with the refrigerant and uh, it's created a phosgene gas and the moisture is uh, if we have any non-condensables left in the system could form with our refrigerants up back up in here hydrochloric and hydrofluoric acids from the fluorine and the chlorine so a couple other things to keep in mind the refrigerant r134a if i hook a gauge up to it and i know the temperature of the tank is 80 degrees i would expect to see a temperature pressure relationship of 87 psi and my gauge if it's reading anything else on the tank at 80 degrees well, that means we do have some non-condensables in the tank and the tank's got mixed with air and we're going to have to treat that tank a little bit differently now a couple other things nitrogen uh, can be used if you smell a burnout and we do a compressor change out uh, we usually can use our nitrogen to blow it out and that can just be vented also so uh, the co2 nitrogen can just be vented out to the atmosphere and uh and that's all right you do want to make sure that if you are connecting the gauges with the low loss fittings that don't leak out the refrigerant or um you know hooking up the hoses and stuff to a burned out compressor that you're using gloves and uh, safety goggles so safety goggles are our safety uh the minimum safety gear that we're going to wear because uh, you could come in contact with that phosgene gas and that's pretty much it for the type one review and summary top 20 things you need to know Thanks, like, subscribe, and thanks for all the comments. Appreciate you.